Have you ever had black knot on your plum or cherry tree? It's not a good thing. And I'm gonna tell you how to reduce it, avoid it, and remove that what you already have. So what do you do if you have black knot? You say, oh, well, you'd leave it. No, you don't want to leave. These are mature growth of black knot. Black knot has a two year cycle. The first year it grows, it's mature in its second year or the second spring it's mature. So all these now will be mature in the spring. So if you leave your tree with all the black knot, you can be sure that each one of these has thousands of spores that will spread on your tree and really have a high likelihood that your tree will get even more loaded with black knot. So you don't want to keep them and you say, well, then you should cut them off. Okay, if I start cutting it off and I say this one I'm cutting it off and you just drop it, that's not a good solution because the black knot is still there. The spores are still there. It's like a mushroom because black knot is a fungal disease. And so when you cut them, take the time to put them in a container. I carry a bucket with me when I do this. And so you can start. And if you're not looking, you can just start removing all the growth that has black knot. How far do you cut them? Well, if you're not sure, you can look at the bark and then look at the growth inside. If there's no brown growth, and I'll show you one if we go close, and I cut it right there. Oh, that, well, you do see that one. You wanna see that close? See how there's a bit of brown under the bark right there. So you want to be beyond that. So I always try to cut it right to where it's joined. So this is a small one. I'll cut it right to where it's joined. This is a bigger one. I'll cut it to where it's joined. We say, but then you're cutting off. Yes, you are cutting off something of the branch, but you know what? I rather have a branch with less growth, I could in this case leave that and I'll look, check my cut, it's okay. And continue on. So I can leave this, yes. This one, no. Now this is the, where it gets interesting. If I start cutting here, I say, well, if I cut that, well, then you still have this and you cut that. And then you have this and you cut that. And then you have this one and that one. Well, when it gets to the point where it's right at, right at the trunk of the branch, this one, you'd have to cut it back. Now you have another one. Well, where you cut, you may as well go right back to where this branch joins. So you're taking off the whole branch. And that works fine as you're going through. Let's get finished this branch. So this one, and this one. So now my branch, if I go down, I can see that up to here, now it's cleaned off. This one, I can do the same, but I'll get to a point right here. And this is the important point to realize when you're cutting it back, you definitely don't want something like this to be on your trunk. Because if it's on the trunk, you will have it gouge into your trunk and then what? Well, I'll just cut it. Bit. Well, then you're cutting the trunk of the tree. So that's why it's so important on a pear. No, on a pear too, but on a plum and on a cherry to do the chimney. Go see the quick and dirty for clearing a chimney. The reason being you will get these happen everywhere you have a small branch. So you see here, this was a little 
spur like that. That's where black knot gets started, at the base or on these small branches. It won't get established on smooth bark like this. So the smoother and the cleaner your trunk is, the less likely you are to have it established on the trunk. So in this case, you say, well, I'll cut it off and I can try. And I have done that where I cut it off. And again, be careful not to have it. But once you've cut it off, you can see you still have it here. It's still under the bark. Well, I'll just keep cutting back. And people do that. And I've done that. And let me just tell you that if you start messing with the trunk like this, you're going to end up with these big gouges. And I'll show you one. It never will heal up properly. This is why you really want to avoid having black knot get started on your trunk. I tried getting it off. I gouged the bark. It'll leave a scar for the life of the tree. So clear a chimney on your trunk to avoid and reduce the chance of black knot getting established on the trunk of your trees. What I do is I just say, okay, this one branch is done. So I will take the saw and I'll remove this whole branch. So look at your branch. If you can avoid this, then do so. And I'll take that branch away with me. Here again, we have, this is almost on the trunk. This, I can try, first case, I can try taking them off. check if I can actually get them all. Well, I was able to get them all. All right, if I can, then do. Otherwise, if you can't, then just remove the whole branch. I find it easier to just snap them off and distinguish between black knot and brown rot. <laughs> you don't you want any of them, but these mummified fruit are usually the result of brown rot. So when you're removing black knot, take off these mummified fruit as well, because they are harboring brown rot. So you continue your tree and you really want to get all of it. I like to remove black knot in the winter simply because I have a black, uh, a black on white background and it's easier to see it where you have white on the ground as the snow. And so I'll go through these trees once completely and usually I'll miss some because they're sometimes they're quite small and they almost look like a bud. So continue to remove all your visible signs of black knot that's one of the preventions. I would say an important part is actually ask yourself, why do you have? This year was the biggest black knot year we have ever had. And I did remove all visible signs of black knot during the winter previous. So why did we have so much? It comes down to asking, is the disease the problem or is it an indicator? Disease, just like pests and even weeds, are not the problem. They are actually indicators. And especially black knot is a great indicator of excess moisture. No wonder cherries and plums grow in drier soil because the trees are less likely to get their most common diseases, black knot and even brown rot. We had a whole lot of black knot this year because I started the irrigation system three weeks earlier 
because the weather was good and I thought okay I can start it I'll start it I shouldn't have started it the trees showed me this year that they had they were too wet it was wet enough because the snow had melted and then I turned on the irrigation so their roots stayed wet they don't want to be wet they want to be moist at times but not wet and so that was a mistake I won't start the irrigation too early in the spring especially for the plum trees another way we use to prevent black knot is we spray with whey and that's a way different situation but we use it for the other fruit trees you can use other organic fungicides whey isn't a fungicide because it doesn't actually kill the spores it just outcompetes them so that's it with black knot do a cleanup when you're pruning remove all visible signs and that will greatly reduce the inoculum to affect your trees the following year get used to doing that when you prune and you'll have better results with your trees so winter is a great time to remove black knot that's visible because you have a white background cut out the branches that are too heavily infected or that have knot right on the bark and you'll reduce the chance of having black knot the following year hope you enjoyed that see you next time bye thanks for watching intrigued check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard have trees already pruningcourse.com subscribe please check out some of the other videos or playlists there's more to come stay tuned bye cleared off We'll just hit the uh, Both. tripod. Go on. Get out. Go on. You stop. You stop. You getting cold? Yeah. <laughs>